What's good, foodie fam? Welcome and welcome back to Plant Based Palettes. I'm Fiamma Jean, your resident plant based foodie. Now, you may be wondering, what the hell does that even mean? And that would be a good question. Allow me to explain. I'm not one of those vegans that like salad and like leaves and all of that stuff. And no offense, because if you like salad, do you boo boo. But me, I don't like cold food. That's not really my jam. So when I say I'm a plant-based foodie, I'm talking about phenomenal, earth shattering, finger licking, grind in your seat, good food. That's what I like. That's what I'm here for. I don't have that many hobbies. I like to travel. I like to eat. I like to work out and level my people. So when I invest time and money and eating food, I want it to really move me. But wait, did you hit that subscribe button yet? If not, what are you waiting for. I heard that Los Angeles is one of the most vegan friendly cities in the world. So join me on this vegan food tour throughout Los Angeles. Let's get to it friends. The first stop on the vegan food tour is Plant Food Wine. This restaurant was beautiful y'all. I love to be in nature but like not too in nature where there are bugs and a whole bunch of dirt. So this is totally my scene. And what better place to eat outside than Los Angeles? Their entire menu is vegan and they're described on the internets as sleek, minimalistic eatery for upscale vegan fare and organic wine with expansive patio seating. If you're familiar with Matthew Kenny, this is one of his restaurants. You'll see Matthew Kenny restaurants on plant-based palettes a lot because I love the variety that his restaurants offer, different types of cuisine in all different areas of the world. At Plant Food Wine, I had the avocado tikka, the kimchi dumplings, and the miso carrot udon. I started with the kimchi dumplings, which were made with sesame, ginger, and coriander. I was starving as per usual, so I was really excited to dig right in. I was pleasantly surprised by the flavor, but was not thrilled that it was cold. As I mentioned, not a fan of cold food. The kimchi was phenomenal. I love the sourness of kimchi or a sauerkraut or anything fermented. Totally my vibe, totally my scene. With the exception of this being cold, I quite enjoyed it. Next up was the avocado tikka. It was served with potato flatbread, avocado, what looked like alfalfa sprouts, I could be very wrong, I don't know, curry leaf yogurt, and radishes. And as I was about to dig in, I clearly did not know how I was supposed to eat it, so I asked the waiter. He suggested that I eat it as a sandwich or make it like a taco. As per usual, before I dig into my next bite, I clean my fork, and here is where I was able to taste the udon broth. There was an explosion of flavors in my mouth that I'd never tasted before. But we'll get to that in a moment. Back to the avocado tikka. The flatbread was warm and the texture, the smoothness and the creaminess of the avocado, incredibly surprising. And I was enjoying it until that tree decided to assault me with leaves or nuts or whatever that was being disrespectful on my plate. Clearly loved the bread because I couldn't stay away from it. Assaulted again. The tree had no manners and did not care about me being there eating my food. My final course was the udon. The miso carrot udon had almond, enoki, shiitake, bok choy, and tokarashi. I hope I'm saying that right. I'm not quite sure. It's a Japanese spice with seven different ingredients. Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't really know how to say it. Drop it in the comments. Educate me. And I'm not gonna lie, I was so excited to get to this noodle soup. I love noodle soup so much, I could eat it every single day. My favorite is ramen, but udon usually hits the spot as well. I had to start with the seasoned tempeh. It was on top, calling my name. And with the first bite, I knew I was in for a treat. There were so many interesting flavors in this udon. It was not simple at all. It was so complex and so full of flavor. It was creamy, but not too thick. It was salty, but not too salty. It was just a really great combination. And if you can't tell by the smell, smile on my face. I really, really love bok choy. It's one of my favorite vegetables. As I'm starting to learn, the vegan tax is real. This meal ran me $83 including tip and I had no drinks, no alcohol. The next stop on the vegan food tour is Sage Plant Based Bistro. Sage is another all plant based restaurant based in Culver City, but they have several locations all throughout Los Angeles. Quick story, I've been to Sage about four different times and each time the experience was lackluster, but I was told that their brunch was nothing to play around with, so I figured I'd give it another chance. The outside area was full when I joined, so I decided to sit inside rather than to wait. Their expansive menu has something for everyone. Whether you want breakfast, lunch, pizza, dinner, whatever. There's something for everyone. But as I mentioned, I did not have the best of experiences, so I went in with really low expectations for this brunch menu. I had the gluten-free sweet potato pancakes and the all-American scramble. 
Not sure what happened here though. I may have been so hungry that I didn't press record. I thought I did. I was making commentary while eating. I don't know, must have not pressed it. I will say the coffee was great, as was the music. Get into this little dance break to Sade's Smooth Operator. The gluten-free sweet potato pancakes were topped with strawberries and bananas with a side of maple syrup and earth balanced butter. I really enjoyed the pancakes. I'm not a huge fan of gluten-free anything. So again, I went in with low expectations. The All-American Scramble was made with tofu, veggie, mushroom scramble, tempeh sausage, breakfast potatoes, red onions, and rosemary sourdough toast. Y'all, I wasn't ready. The tofu, veggie, mushroom scramble rivaled mine. Despite having four bad experiences at Sage, I would go again just from this brunch experience alone. But Sage Plant-Based Bistro is no different than any other vegan restaurant I experienced when it comes to price. For those two dishes and a coffee, my total came to $45.59 including tip. Next stop on the vegan food tour is the Grain Cafe. Y'all, the Grain Cafe was so cute. It was the cutest little eatery I've ever seen. They too have an expansive vegan menu. No matter what you're in the mood for, the Grain Cafe probably has something to satisfy your craving. I was in the mood for a little vegan Mexican, so I got huevos rancheros breakfast, as well as the chilequiles breakfast. The chilequiles came out first, so I started with that. The chilequiles were made with corn tortilla chips, zucchini, mushrooms, avocado, and tofu eggs, and it was sautéed in a red salsa, and it was topped with their homemade sour cream, which was vegan of course, as well as diet cheese. This was my first time having chilequiles ever, and it was so, so good. It felt like a breakfast nacho of sorts. This trip, I was assaulted first by a tree dropping nuts and leaves in my lap and in my plate, and here at the Grain Cafe, I had a fruit fly or a mosquito, something that kept buzzing around my face. The huevos rancheros came out after. That was also made with tofu eggs, but it was on top of two corn tortillas, topped with ranchero sauce, avocado, and it was served with black beans. I love Mexican food, so whenever I can eat it, I'm a happy girl, and Mexican food is very easy to make vegan. While the food was good, it didn't come out hot. It came out somewhat lukewarm. That is a pet peeve of mine. I need my food piping hot. I feel like that's the theme of this whole video. If you've learned nothing else, I do not like cold food. One thing about me, if coffee's on the menu, I'm probably going to get it. The Green Cafe was by far the most affordable of all of the restaurants I visited while in LA. The total came to $31.98, including tip. The final stop on the vegan food tour is the Butcher's Daughter. How cute is this place? It's so light and airy. This is a vegetarian and vegan restaurant with tons to offer again. I will say LA is doing a great job of offering different types of food to satisfy different types of palates and cravings. I started with the mushroom calamari and finished it off with the jumbo lump crab cake. I jumped into that mushroom calamari as soon as it came out. It was made with oyster mushrooms and was served with a side of aioli. It was so tasty, but then again, I feel like it's really hard to get fried things wrong. Nevertheless, I couldn't stop eating them. In fact, we ordered two. It was good. Moving on to the jumbo lump crab cake. It was made with jackfruit, quinoa, and sweet potatoes. It was topped with a fennel cucumber saw and harissa tartare. And while the jumbo lump crab cake had really great flavor, it was seasoned really well, I wasn't a huge fan because of the texture. I haven't always been a vegan, so I've had really great crab cakes before, and I had these crab cakes I think expecting a specific type of texture. With the sweet potatoes, this crab cake was a little too soft for my liking, but I ate it all though. We don't waste food over here. Unless it's like really bad, then I'm not gonna eat it. I'm not gonna waste my time or yours. We split the check three ways, and surprisingly, it only came to $45.88 for my portion, including tip. And we ordered a lot of food. You know, I used to live in Los Angeles, so I think my expectations were really high, and I was let down. Don't get me wrong, the food was good. It just wasn't bomb bomb. Like, I want the food to move me. And I have my favorites in LA that I could have gone to and I should have gone to, so we're going to have to run this back. I'm gonna have to go to LA again so we can explore all of the phenomenal vegan food that Los Angeles has to offer. Have you been to one of the restaurants that I explored in the video? 
If so, let me know what your experience was down in the comments. Is there a restaurant that I need to go to when I go back? Let me know, I wanna try them all. Join me as I explore all of the vegan food throughout the world. We're going to be going to London, Spain, Abu Dhabi, Dubai, Philadelphia, New York, North Carolina, Portland, Los Angeles again, London, did I say London? I can't remember. All of the places, folks. If there's a city that I didn't name that you just insist that I go to, let me know. Until next time, friends.